Another man I can't wait to learn a lot about. We've talked to him before. He was just a young little whippersnapper at yep. that point. Mm -hmm. Had already hit a game winner. Now he's hit mm -hmm. four in the season in his rookie year in the hardest division to kick in in football. Just got fresh out of a game-winning 52-yard kick in the divisional round. Ladies and gentlemen, his jersey sold out. Can't find it. Wow. Evan McPherson. Yeah! What's up, dude? What's going on? Hey. How we doing? Hey, hell of a year, man. Hey, hey, let's keep it going, obviously. Yeah, go, but boy. hell of a year, man. The last time we chatted with you, you know, it was early in the year. You hit a game winner, and you're I'm just trying to keep my head down, trying to do my thing. You're building your legacy already, dude. Congrats on a hell of a season. Yeah, thanks, man. Obviously, it's not over yet. I, I know some people in that in that room are doubting the Bengals. Oh, 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 oh. Are you talking to me? Tony, Tony, Tony. Who is it? I, Whoever bet against the Bengals is who I'm talking about. Oh, oh, and I know earlier in the year, the if you recall, I, this this team's different. I, I I knew early in the year this team was going to have what it took, you know, to to win playoff games and make a run for the Super Bowl. And uh, here we are. We got Joey B. Oh, cool sunglasses. Oh, they cool cool oh, yeah. be. the coolest. We got Jamar Chase, Woo! T. Higgins, Woo! Tyler Boyd, what? Freaking Joe Mixon, what? and C.J. Uzama. Uzama. Wow. Just scoring points, you know, coming up big time for the Bengals. But no, I mean, we're all having fun here. Uh, I appreciate y'all having me on. Um, you know, there's no better show. Well, I appreciate that. That means a lot. And right now, there's no better guy kicking balls than you. And I would like to chat with you about some of the ways you think you have gotten here. Because that, let, by the way, shout out to you. You did say that early in the season. And I think Joe Burr came out and said, the first day we saw Evan McPherson in the building, we knew we had a guy. What was that? You think you just came in and were just yourself and natural and confident? And I assume you didn't view that as any type of difference. But I guess there's other kickers out there that are just like, I guess. I, I don't know. I've never been around. Honestly, I've never been around them. But the stories I hear from other people is that kickers just come in, are scared to death to talk to anybody. Joey Burrow came out after the game and was like, we knew who this guy was immediately upon how he interacted with people. I assume that was just a welcoming locker room. And is that how you always are? Yeah, no, it was definitely a welcoming uh, locker room. And I think the biggest thing for me was to come in and get comfortable and just, you know, make friends. Because I think that's that's probably the, the way you get comfortable with a team is you, you kind of introduce yourself to everyone, get to know everyone, and um, kind of start to build a relationship. Um, and that's how they kind of, I guess, gain confidence in you. And if they have confidence in me, then I'm going to have confidence in myself uh, to go out there and perform for them. But um, no, this, this locker room was a super welcoming uh, locker room, you know, just coming in, knowing that, you know, we had a lot of guys and we're all working for the, for the same goal. Okay, so you said that builds your confidence inside you being friends with those guys. Let's talk about one of the most legendary kicking stories I've ever heard in my entire life. One that will be talked about at all kicking camps. You know it, too. You've been to kicking camps where they tell stories about these guys' unwavering confidence and legendary tales of that. You actually having the moment, then actually doing it, and then banging one through before it even gets through the uprights, celebrating with Huber and with Clark. I mean, that level of confidence is something that only a few people ever can attain. And I know it's because there's a lot of hard work and everything like that, but did you actually say, look, uh, well, cup of uh, well, <laughs> looks like we're going to the AFC Championship, fist pump and jog out there. And is that just something you've done on a regular basis? Is that, the, I know everybody says I'm going on the field to make the kick, but that is a level of confidence and comfort that many strive to get to and never reach, dude. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I explained like, Confidence is probably the number one thing for a kicker to have, in my opinion. Uh, first and foremost, obviously. I think uh, – and, and I kind of saw it as a challenge. Um, you know, if you, if you say something like that, mm. you, know, you better go out there and back it up because you're not, you're not walking back to the sideline after just missing a field goal that you said you're going to make. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you can't have – that's what people speak things into existence. Everybody's like, they speak it into existence. You speak it into existence. It's like, yeah, maybe the universe is answering, but also now that everybody knows what I'm trying to do, if I don't do it, I'm a failure, basically. It, that's, yeah. yeah, I get it. So, yeah, I mean, that, that, that was definitely part of it. But, uh, 
So I wanted to ask you a question. So that football on your desk, I saw a picture, a close-up picture of it, not the, the Colts one. Oh, this one here, yeah. Not the one with all the uh, Adam Vinatieri records on it. Yeah, yeah. What do you? Which one do you want to see? The uh, the playoff one, the playoff field goals one. Most points in a postseason career. Just a post single postseason. The the most field goals in a postseason or a single postseason. Mm, most field goals in a single postseason. Oh, that's the bottom one here, huh? You've seen this, huh? You've seen yep. this ball, yeah. Uh, Fourteen. How many do you? You've had thirteen points. In the last two games, they said 13 plus. How many do you have right now? We got eight right now. And that's so I saw that ball before the first game, and I was like, that'd be pretty cool to break. I said, that'd be a pretty cool record to break. Damn. Hey, listen, so, take it easy. Vinatieri played a long fucking time, Evan. All right. All right. But just know these last two games. <laughs> uh, where are you from originally? Uh, Fort Payne, Alabama. How many sports did you play? I'm going to say I, I played a lot growing up, but for the most part, just soccer and football. When did you get into kicking and when did you know like, oh, OK, I have a fucking cannon and I'd rather run three steps instead of seven miles a game? Did you think was that the decision or did you just naturally pick up kicking better? Uh, so it probably started when I was like fourth or fifth grade. My older brother tried out um, when he was in ninth grade. And then, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. You know, we had a soccer goal in the yard, and we just put PVC pipes on the side of them and started, you know, kicking over the soccer goal instead of into it. But uh, I'd say whenever I really started taking it serious was my eighth grade year. Uh, my brother, my older brother had graduated. They didn't have a kicker uh, for the varsity team. And so I tried out. I made the team and um, kind of just played varsity, you know, the rest of the way. Um, so I'd say my eighth grade year is kind of when I really – when it really took a turn and it really got serious for me. And your little brother right now is kind of carrying on the McPherson legacy, right? Yeah. No, I mean, he, he, he just finished up his senior year and obviously he broke my, uh, my record for the longest field goal in Alabama high school uh, football history. So you guys, your parents are just churning out kickers down there. I mean, it's just like the Colquitt family is a family of kickers, obviously, and we all know that there's legendary tales of legacies in a lot of different professions, but if there, there might be, what, two, three McPhersons in the fucking league at one time? That's insane to think about. Do you compete with each other? Do, does, uh, yeah. do you, does your little brother ever beat you? Uh, there's probably been a couple times where he has. Oh, um, no. <laughs> I've said it, and I'll say it here now. I mean, he's probably better than I was at his age um, right now. And, you know, he, he's a he's a smaller guy, but he's got an extremely fast and kind of whippy leg. And so, I mean, he can do some, some crazy things with the football. You're not that large of a guy either, and your leg speed is insane. What do you think that's from? Is it from working out or just kicking constantly since eighth grade? I mean, I, I think it just comes down to just growing up, you know, like, playing sports all like my whole life uh i think soccer has a lot to do with it uh obviously you run a lot in soccer and um so i think just kind of it, it all um it's kind of from i would just say you know just being involved with sports you know my whole life obviously playing soccer playing football and just you know thousands and thousands and thousands of reps as you know this is the long season like your rookie year is the long going because you come out of college then you go work out for the combine or pro day. Then you get drafted. Then you have OTAs. Then you have training camp. Then you have the longest season in the history of the NFL. Then now you have wild card, divisional round, uh, now AFC championship. How's the leg feel? I mean, obviously 54 and 52 last week. You have no fucking problem in the freezing cold. How does the leg feel? Oh, the leg's feeling great. And uh, I think that's a testament to our, our, um, our training staff. Uh, they, they've done a great job with me. Uh, if I'm ever feeling, you know, anything tight or um, any soreness or anything like that, you know, they've jumped on it real fast and, and helped me, uh, you know, feel 100% every single week. Um, and so going into the playoffs, you know, I'm feeling like it's week one. I mean, these are all extra extra football games. And so you're kind of excited and uh, the uh, the adrenaline's kind of heightened and, uh you know, it's just pumping through through your blood, and so I don't. I feel like you can't really get injured in the playoffs just because it's so exciting, and you know, it, 
these are extra football games that you get to play. And extra checks, too, Evan. And extra <laughs> checks. You know, you don't have to think about that. You love the game, of course, yeah. <laughs> this offseason, though, you'll think about it after the Super Bowl. After the Super Bowl. Go ahead, Tone. Evan, Pat was talking about how hard it is to kick in the AFC North. And earlier we were talking about it's probably the best kicking division now in the NFL with you, Boz, and Tucker. And Alabama and Florida – not a lot of cold weather down there. What was it like? Do you think the, the weather in the AFC North kind of makes you focus in more? And what was it like going from always kicking in warmer weather places to the AFC North? Yeah, being a soft-ass Southern boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, nah, it gets pretty cold up in Northeast Alabama, I will say. <laughs> not, not as cold as it gets here, but it does get a little chilly. But no, I think uh, I actually saw a kicker um, say you kind of got to embrace the weather. And I think that's what I kind of try to do coming into it. Um, if we had those, I mean, we had uh, a rainy day of practice and it was like 30, it was like 38 and rainy. And I was like, this is just miserable. But you, you kind of learn a lot from it. Um, you, you learn um, that nothing really matters, but, you know, getting your foot in the ground and kind of hitting a clean ball. And I mean, if you don't, if you don't get the, you know, if you don't get a good plant and put a good head on the ball, you know, the the weather and the rain the snow whatever it's going to affect you a lot and so i think it just really made me focus more on you know ball contact and uh body control isn't it crazy whenever you just start thinking about your three yards there as opposed to what's happening everywhere else it's a real game changer that's a veteran mindset by the way it took me a bit to get to that especially with punting in some of those different stadiums i'm like i gotta worry about this fucking jet stream up here and (laughs) if i hit it over here but what i'm not worrying about is just hitting the ball clean if i just hit the ball clean hopefully everything else will figure itself out that's a veteran mindset dude have you been have you gone to a lot of camps and stuff like that do you is it all just rep side uh uh through how you get better or how do you continue to grow yeah, no, I mean, I like to compete against people um, in the offseason, obviously. And, and Jamie Cole's probably been that that guy for me just to go and uh, kind of have him look at me and uh, kind of refine uh, some things that, you know, might be um, flawed in my in my technique. And just, you know, the guys that come around, um, you know, he has a camp that we're, let's say, five to six, seven NFL guys just come out come out to and, and kick. I know you've been to a couple. Yeah, they're um, awesome. Those are awesome days. We got hammered drunk in between them. I don't know if you guys are still doing that, but we used to go have a great time, and then next day, let's get some Pedialytes. But you're just competing yeah. and learning. It's like a, it's literally yeah. a home run derby. If you, it's awesome. Yeah, no, it, th- those camps are awesome. And like you said, it's, it's not all about uh, on the field, but off the field, it's just so much fun. Where do you think you can get better? Um... I mean, I think I can improve uh, probably in a lot of places. Um, yeah, all right. Don't I, even I, care. I can, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't need to hear it. Hey, you're just making the kick. Who gives a fuck, dude? You know, yeah. go ahead, Ty. Evan, with your offense, obviously you know you're probably going to get a decent amount of opportunities. Um, but, like, when you go into a game, are you ever thinking, like, oh, I actually I'm, I might need a couple today in order to, you know, help us win? Or are you just thinking about making your next kick every time no matter what? I mean, it, it, it's probably like, you know, make, make your next kick no matter what. But I will say um, we probably um, handle different game or games different than others. Um, you know, if we're playing a team again, if, it, if we're playing a team like Kansas City where we need to score points and, you know, we got a fourth and goal from the five, you know, we might take the points rather than going for it. And um, so, I mean, every, every game is different. Um, How is first- Zach? How is Zach Taylor? Cool guy? Yeah, he's nice. He's a great guy. And I thought about wearing my shirt, my Zach Taylor shirt. I don't know if y'all have seen Jamar wear these Joe Burrow shirts out in pregame. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. They, mm-hmm. so they sent us a Zach Taylor one, and we were going to wear it out to pregame in Tennessee, but they, the NFL came out and said they'd fine you. If oh, you wow. Oh, wow. Oh, they don't like the you guys supporting your head coach. I mean, he had a rough go the first couple of years. Not a lot of wins. A lot of people wondering, like, is this guy – going to be a coach and this year it's just been spectacular and it feels like the way you're talking about him with shirts and everything the whole locker room loves him he's got every the culture is all ready to go no i mean everybody loves him and i think everybody wants him around here for for the next couple of years i mean he he's a great guy a great coach uh i think he's handled me great uh he he kind of lets me do kind of my own thing um it's you know it's me and darren um, and then if Zach has an input, you know, he'll definitely come and, and give it. But, you know, he's been great, uh, great to me. Um, 
you know, he, he's shown all the confidence in the world to me. And like I said, that, that gives me all the confidence in the world to go out there and, you know, perform for him. Well, it looks like we're going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Hope that moment happens for you. We know you'll deliver. Uh, you are a fantastic, not only story, but hopefully a legend that we'll learn about for a long, long time. I appreciate your time, dude. Good luck this weekend. Yeah, no, I appreciate y'all having me. Hey, no problem. I'll tell that son of a bitch who picked against you, too. Mm-hmm. You know. All right. <laughs> I'll, 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 yeah, I'll say, hey, no more misinformation on this program. We're doing yeah, that. Yeah, we're doing, we're doing that, AJ. Ladies and gentlemen, Evan McPherson. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. He bombs the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The fact that he's already got his eyes on that ball. That was funny. Was yeah, I saw a close-up photo of That's, that. How did he see that? So I probably posted it sometime. Yeah. Like I probably posted the ball at oh, some point. Yeah. And then he saw it. By using that as motivation. Is yeah, like, oh, is that, So that's the, okay. huh, there's the records, hmm. all of them, okay. that this guy has. I, I would have to travel to Canton to see all these listed. <laughs> uh-huh. Now it's just on one ball. That's amazing. That's a killer mindset. I enjoy it. I would assume, and I don't want to get into it, but because, I mean, we do a lot of kicker talk here, and that was a lot of kicker talk, a lot of inside kicker talk, too, that probably, you know, would never do any type of, numbers in the past and i have no idea if people just tuned out as soon as we started talking about it and if they stuck around i appreciate it